The stage is now set for the race for U.S. Senate in Texas. Air Force combat veteran M.J. Hager beat out State Senator Royce West to win the Democratic nomination. She will now take on incumbent Republican Senator John Cornyn in November. State Bureau reporter Wes Rappaport spoke with both Hager and Cornyn about the race to come and their thoughts on the big question of how to safely send children back to school. How to open schools safely is the big question for a lot of Texans right now. Senator John Cornyn says students need to be back in the classroom. He believes virtual learning leaves some students behind. For more affluent people who can afford the technology, the computers, the Wi-Fi and the like, they're going to probably be just fine. But there is a whole category of, of un, uh, poorer uh, children who are not going to get access to their education. It's really important for their, um, their development that they do. But I think it all comes down to safety. But I think what we've seen is the virus is not going away. We do need to try to figure out how to adapt. And I think we, by and large, figured that out. Wash your hands. Maintain social distance, wear masks when you can't, when you feel sick, stay home. MJ Hager says as a mom of young children, she understands the needs and the big picture. I think we need to acknowledge how uh, the impact that the isolation and, and the social problems of, of keeping kids out of school um, that are not easily uh, overcome, you know, easy to overcome. But I think that the conversation has to be um, less about whether or not schools are going to open, whether or not businesses are going to open, whether or not we're going to mandate masks. We're, we're, we're having conversations about the reaction um, to the pandemic instead of the uh, root cause. You know, we have to talk about widespread access to testing and testing folks that are not showing symptoms. We need to have contact tracing. We need to just have better data and have leaders that are held accountable for these failures in their crisis management. Because what crisis is on the horizon, by the way? When's the next crisis? Can we, can we please train people the way I've been trained in the military and in healthcare in crisis management and making decisions based on data and what's best for our constituents instead of what's best for our political party. But to make those decisions, Hager has to win. I asked her if she can unite a party divided by a bitter runoff that she narrowly won. We are not going to let John Cornyn and his attack ads and the money that his corporate donors are pouring into this race um, divide us. It's too important. We are, have too much on the line. There's too many people without access to health care. There's a pandemic that's being completely fumbled. Um, there's an economic crisis. We've got kids in cages. We have climate change. It's just too important for us to not focus on anything other than the mission at hand. Senator Cornyn says he's ready to take on his latest challenger. I look forward to engaging with uh, Ms. Hager and uh, talking about the issues that people here in Texas care about. Not, not so much what people at the national level um, want to talk about, but what affects the lives and livelihoods of people here in Texas. I'm Wes Rappaport for State of Texas. The candidates still have a long way to go until November, and Hager faces an uphill battle against Senator Cornyn. I spoke with Jim Henson from the Texas Politics Project about the race and the challenges for both candidates. This is one of the more interesting races in the country, really, because uh, on one hand, John Cornyn, a senior senator uh, running for his fourth term, uh, second in command, really, and, and in line to become majority leader were you know, Mitch McConnell to retire or, or lose this election. And Mitch McConnell is in a, in a tough race himself in his home state of Kentucky. John Cornyn is going to be, as you say, well-funded. Um, I mean, there's just going to be, you know, practically no limit to the amount of money that will flow in to, to defend John Cornyn, both from his fundraisers in the state, but from national uh, organizations. You know, on the other hand, Cornyn has always been a very interesting Republican figure in the sense that, um, you know, his, his job approval numbers, as you and I have talked about on your show before, are always kind of a, an, give you the sense that Republicans are damning him with faint praise. His job approval numbers, they're not terrible, but they're typically among Republicans still, even in the 60s or low 70s uh, at best, which is well below the more popular Republicans at various times throughout Cornyn's uh, uh, service, whether it was Rick Perry uh, in the last decade or now people like Greg Abbott or even Ted Cruz are more popular among the Republican base. And that's always made Cornyn seem somewhat vulnerable, even though he's managed to win these races. This is likely to be a tougher race than Cornyn has had in the past. 
because of the national environment and because uh, Donald Trump is such a mobilizing force for Democrats. Of course, President Trump is also a mobilizing force for Republicans, and later this month he plans to visit Midland Odessa for a fundraiser where some Texans are willing to pay a lot to get in. The Odessa American reports that it costs $2,800 to attend the luncheon. It's $50,000 to get a photo with the president. $100,000 gets you into a roundtable discussion with him. An endorsement from the president helped push one Texas candidate closer to a seat in Congress. I'm going to be out uh, spending as much of my time and energy as I can, making sure that we keep Texas red. Dr. Ronnie Jackson won Tuesday night's runoff for the 13th Congressional District. The seat is currently held by Republican Mac Thornberry, who is retiring. Jackson previously served as White House position. He faces Democrat Gus Trujillo in November, but Jackson is expected to win the reliably Republican district. A former Texas congressman is also on a path back to Capitol Hill. Pete Sessions won the Republican runoff in U.S. House District 17. Sessions used to represent the Dallas area in Congress, but lost his seat in 2018. He moved to Waco to run for the seat held by retiring Congressman Bill Flores. Sessions will be the favorite in November, where he'll face Democrat Rick Kennedy. The Republican incumbent in nearby District 10 will face a tougher re-election challenge. Michael McCall has served eight terms in Congress. He's the top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. McCall will face Mike Siegel in November. He's a Democrat endorsed by Bernie Sanders. Siegel came within five points of beating McCall in the 2018 election. District 13 31 was also close in 2018. This time, Republican John Carter faces a new challenger. Donna Imam won the Democratic runoff. She's a computer engineer who says health care is her top issue. Coming up, why did the Travis County Commissioner's Court oppose a bill meant to increase transparency when someone dies in police custody? How the question is becoming an issue in a race for state Senate? We investigate coming up.